a very warm good morning to all my viewers hope you all are doing great so today's video is history taking in surgery so the main problem faced by students in history taking in surgery is that it unlike you know medical subjects where every system has a template as what the questions to be asked what are the questions to be asked in cardiovascular system what are the questions to be asked in respiratory system but in surgery there is no particular template for any particular disease there are certain questions which are obvious like for example for neck swellings you need to ask these uh, particular features of hypothyroidism hypothyroidism all that um, in acute abdomen certain certain are very specific and those are told by the professor but then certain questions are like never thought to you but you are expected to be asked and that's where the game gets tricky so let's explore as how to take a good history in surgery posting so the first thing is um, I would like to cover up all the main cases that are like most commonly seen cases so today I will be like giving an example on history taking for acute appendicitis which is one of the most common presentation in acute abdomen so to begin with the first thing to do in a history taking is building the rapport with the patient like you know make them feel comfortable get a good consent that you want to take history introduce yourself that you are a medical student and not a doctor that's very important guys uh, introduce yourself and then um, build a good rapport talk to them smile and you know make them feel comfortable don't don't make it too serious and awkward for them you know so sit with them uh, it's better to sit with the patient at the eye level put a chair and sit down and then first thing to do in any any clinical procedure just like i always say is um, patient identification so ask for the patient's name ic number or passport number and then uh, ask for their address the residential address uh, it is important because of the logistic issues the patient might face during the management uh, and the treatment course other things are you need to ask for the patient's registration number date of admission so and even the patient's race so all this uh, comes under patient identification so the second thing is the beginning of the main history itself which is the chief complaint so most commonly most commonly the surgical cases come either with uh, abdominal pain or pain in the neck or any mass or swelling or um, sometimes most of the as I told you previously elective cases are admitted for certain procedures you know they are electively admitted for OGTS or electively admitted for some particular surgery after they were planned for it so uh, even if it, the thing for students the tip for the students is even if they are electively admitted for a surgery for example a uh, female admitted for a mastectomy you should never never say that the chief complaint is uh, the patient is electively admitted for this procedure no the chief complaint is always the first complaint the patient presented with when the patient suffered from this particular problem you know so if it was a uh, swelling or a uh, pain that should be your chief complaint always even if it's the patient's third or fourth admission and she has come for the surgery even then that has to be the chief complaint so in our case since we are discussing acute appendicitis this is usually um, abdominal pain the patient will just tell uh, abdominal pain so now you need to get into depth of the chief complaint which is uh, HOPI which is history of presenting illness so usually in our classes what we are taught is the stock rates you know this is the this is the sort of uh, abbrevi mnemonic you can say for asking questions but the thing is this is only for pain it's important to note that socrates can't be used in every case of history taking it is just for pain so when it is like um, for acute appendicitis when the patient is telling it's abdominal pain you ask about the socrates first okay so the site s is standing for site so the socrates um, ask for the site site is usually the patient will tell as right iliac fossa that's the most common place where uh, acute appendicitis is present it uh, again note it's the most common place not always sometimes the patient can say it's generalized abdominal pain and still have acute appendicitis so that's the thing you know in clinical practice it's never never like 100% of this or that you know so there can be changes and then uh, so when it is right iliac fossa pain you have to ask about the progression of the pain usually the uh, acute appendicitis presents classically with this uh, periumbilical pain initially which is like migrating to the right iliac fossa so this classical presentation of acute appendicitis must be asked about and why this is like this way you must go into depth of theory because um, the parietal and the visceral peritoneum the infection spreads and that's why the uh, pain is migrating from the periambilical to the right iliac fossa then next thing you need to ask about is uh, socrates o so o stands for onset so acute appendicitis is mostly of acute onset because um, the patient has worsening pain for past uh, one or two days which is within 24 to 48 hours it becomes very worse and the patient cannot tolerate and usually seeks for the medical attention so c is character 
So character is uh, usually in acute appendicitis patients present with a sharp or colicky or pricking sort of pain. So now we need to consider that in Asian countries patient might not be very well versed with describing this character of pain you know like in contrast to European nature where they will like you know immediately upon asking what's the character of pain they might describe as colicky pain or sharp pain or pricking pain. But then in this con uh, this part of the world, sometimes patient might not be able to describe, okay? So in that case, lead give them leading questions like ask them, does it feel like it's pricking? Does it feel like it's stabbing? So that's the tip for students, you know, how to gain a good history. You need to talk to patient in their language, like how they can understand and get the information you need from it. So usually for acute appendicitis, it's either colicky, very sharp or colicky pain. And then R, R is a radiating feature. So ask if the patient pain is radiating elsewhere from the location of the pain itself for example is it radiating to back or is it radiating to the upwards or if there is pain elsewhere so things like this you must ask because certain pains can have even referred pain you know where the dermatome is the same dermatome sub the nervous level the level of the spinal nerve supplying the same dermatomes and myotomes so ask for uh, check out for the referred pains as well as for radiation of the pain to the back or elsewhere in the body and it is important to have the knowledge, uh, theoretical knowledge to not confuse this pain with any other, you know, general musculoskeletal pain. There can be any other pain which is not actually related to the current medical uh, or surgical problem. So you must be able to differentiate that as well. So A, next one is A stands for associated uh, features. So any associating complaint if the patient is having, such as usually the acute appendicitis is presenting with vomiting, fever, anorexia. So you need to ask in detail about these complaints as well, okay? So for example, vomiting, the first thing, uh, when the patient says vomiting, you need to have a detailed history about vomiting itself, you know? You need to ask uh, since when the patient has been vomiting, that is when was the first episode the patient vomited, if it, was it like ever since the pain started or even since before that or after that, uh, you need to ask since when and then how much the quantity of um, vomitus itself, like the patient might not be able to describe so help them to describe by telling how many cups you know like show them the cup and say how many cups of vomit probably you uh, vomited uh, important to notice terms like this you know for vomit is you say cups how many cups full for sputum you say how many spoonfuls of sputum so the these descriptive terms are in, uh, important when you present your case to the lecturer you know as a long case when you are presenting your case you have to use these terms and then uh, what was the content of the vomitus? Where was it just food? Was it digested or undigested food? Or was it just watery? Or was it like mucus? Was it bile? Or was it blood? Or was it uh, coffee ground? Coffee ground is usually digested blood, you know, which appears like a dark brownish in color. And it appears like a grounded coffee. That's why it's called coffee ground. Or um, anything else. Did, did they see any other material in it? Okay. And then... Uh, uh, get the information about all this then you ask what did they do for it okay like did they try to take any anti-emetics for it or any traditional ways like did they try to intervene the condition and then second associated feature is fever right so ask them how long the fever was there was it uh, continuous or intermittent and was it uh, associated with pain like did they have the fever even before the pain started or and then total duration of fever and ask if they even like measured their temperature you know some patients uh, if it is a very rural area patients might not measure their temperature however nowadays mostly everyone has a digital thermometer so ask them if they measured their temperature and what was the highest temperature document that and then the next thing is uh, ask for any loss of weight or loss of appetite so uh, this thing sometimes the patient might not be able to say um, but then you can ask them in a way that, you know, like a common man language, you can ask, did they feel their uh, clothes got loose? You know, did they feel the clothes were not fitting them. Like, did they feel their clothes are very loose? Or did they, uh, did someone else tell them that they look skinnier compared to before? Or did they themselves feel that they have lost some weight? So these are the ways you can gain the information, you know. Uh, and then loss of weight, loss of appetite. Are they eating less food? compared to before and what is the reason is it because the pain is getting aggravated or is it because they just don't feel like eating is it because of early satiety that is they feel full earlier or in general they don't want to eat so ask details of even that and then the next thing we need to ask is about bowel opening so bowel opening is how many times they passed feces 
so first thing you need to ask is normal bowel habit in order to compare if there is any abnormality you must know what is the patient's normal bowel habit first so ask the patient as in general how many times do they pass feces because for some patients it can just be once per day or some patients can have th three times per day and still be normal for them so it varies from person to person so you cannot just assume that three times per day is abnormal you have to compare it with the patient's normal there is no guideline for that you know it varies from person to person so then uh, if there is any change in the bowel habit like uh, usually it is two times per day but now it has suddenly become five times per day in that case you need to ask more or it can even be the other way around you know it can be less that is like usually passing three times per day but now it's only one time per day so in those cases ask further questions because um, it can be you know diarrhea or constipation and they might not be directly able to tell you so ask them about the nature of their stool if it is hard or soft or compared to normal if there was any variation ask them about the color was there any uh, blood mixed with it or was there any blackish colored stool in which uh, like black colored stool like malina if it if you are suspecting malina you must ask them about any foul smelling or tarry sticky nature fishy tarry smelling uh, fishy smelling uh, stool with the tarry sticky nature is for malina you need to ask them in detail about these characters and then ask them uh, if they see any blood in the stool which is uh, which is like either mixed with stool or if it is just coated in the stool or if it is just fresh blood you need to ask them was it like streaks around the stool because all this gives you idea ab about the lowest GI bleeding you need to like find out via this history you know that's why the history taking plays 19 uh, almost 80 percent role in um, diagnosing a disease usually people think it's the investigation which is playing a major role but we as medical students must know that a good history is very very important for a prompt diagnosis and the appropriate treatment and then um, after bowel opening you even need to ask about um, any flatus okay if there is no bowel opening the there can be a possibility of uh, intestine, uh, intestinal obstruction so you must ask if the patient is still able to pass flatus or not or if there is any uh, ab uh, any pain any abdominal pain or pain during passing the feces ask even these things after the bowel opening you need to ask about passing urine if the patient is passing normal amount of urine if he is drinking enough water if there is any signs of urinary tract infections uti that is a uh, uh, pain, uh, burning sensation, any pain in suprapubic region, if the patient is having any increased frequency or urgency, any itching or burning sensation uh, while passing urination. So things like this to rule out the UTI you need to ask and then uh, ask them about the color of the urine as well if it is yellow or white or straw colored. So ask them about that and then ask them about any associated trauma because when there is a pain you must always uh, rule out trauma it might not be something internal but some uh, it can just be musculoskeletal pain because of trauma so ask them any time about history of trauma history of falls any hits uh, so basically any insult to that particular region of pain and then the next thing is you must ask about any associated dizziness loss of consciousness or um, any confusion all that apart from all these to rule out the other systemic conditions uh, you must do later a systemic review specifically but then you can just ask while asking the associated features as any chest pain any shortness of breath any uh, dizziness again or any other symptoms of um, other GI symptoms so all these uh, are for the associated features you must take in the 